to, to remove the rear seats, the first thing you're going to do is just move the, the centre armrest. And all you're going to do is come in here and just unclip that piece out of there, pull that clear, and then you're just going to pull up on the seat and just pull it out. This here is the motor assembly that opens the, the latches for the, the convertible compartment uh, to actually allow the, the roof to come out. The way this works is an assembly in here with gears, there are two Bowden cables which actually go to the latches which either lock or unlock them. To open this up, you can pull this out, that opens up and there's five clips in here, you just lever underneath here just with your fingers and that'll pop straight off. And you can see you've got the assembly here which does all the work. The button that you press is this one here which will unlock this so this assembly can actually move. This gear just pops straight off. And from what I understand, sometimes these gears can actually strip. So that's how you would get, get access to it to check that. And when you use the Allen key here to turn, it actually goes in the middle of this one here, which turns this gear, which then in turn moves this either forward or back, which pulls on these Bowden cables. Also, there's a sensor in here, which determines or tells obviously the CVM which position it is to tell if it's locked or unlocked. To put that back on, pretty simple. That just pushes straight back down on and that holds there. This plastic piece actually holds that centre gear in place, so if this isn't seated correctly, that centre gear will pop off, so this obviously needs to be in good condition. To remove the, beer, the rear backrest, a couple of things you want to do to start off with. First thing we do is raise the, the headrest, just lift those up until they clip in, and the next thing I want, to, the best thing to do is actually get the seat belts around the back here and then around here at the uh, the rear of the doors, that just keeps them out of the way, otherwise it, they're a bit of a pain. Uh, the actual seat itself is just, a, there's a clip in there, and a big clip in there that just pulls up. You need to get out of the way of this first, and whilst we're doing that, there's two 10mm nuts down here which you need to remove. We're going to pull those clear, as well as pull up at the same time, and that's going to pull it out. That will just pop out. The clips look like that and they just clip over there so that's what you're pulling it clear off. To remove this panel here there are two 8mm screws that are under, on the undersides of the armrest. You're just going to remove those. And once they're out, I'm also going to pull that seal clear, I can just pull that straight out. And then what I'm going to do is just gently pry that, there's a couple of clips underneath it. Okay, pull that clear, and then disconnect the speaker uh, connection, and then that piece comes out. To remove this panel, the first thing I'm going to do is having lifted the compartment uh, lid and held it up, I'm going to come in here and remove this piece here, which is the spring, depending on the, the year of your car, they changed it in the later models. This is a 2001 car, so it's one of the original designs. Uh, there's a spring here, I'm just going to get some long nose pliers and just remove that spring from where it holds onto. What I'm going to do first is actually pull out the plastic piece, and once that plastic piece is out, I'm then going to pull the spring out, and then just disconnect that down here, and once that's out, then I'm going to use a 7mm and there are three screws along the top here to remove. I'm going to remove that rear seal. I'm also going to come up the front here. And there's a little knob thing there. You just need to feed that over so that's clear of that. And now I can just gently pull that up 
and that whole thing will unclip off. One of the things that does break on these is this sliding mechanism. So the first thing when they talk about this in the TIS with servicing is they actually occasionally put some, some lubricant on these rails here so they can slide nice and easily because that spring is going to be pulling that back and forth as the, the roof opens and closes. Also I've done a fix on mine because the little plastic piece in here often breaks out just due to the faucets on it. I've actually put a piece of aluminium in there, drilled a little hole in it and glued it in fairly solidly there so they can just pull back and forth and it's never going to break anymore. Last thing that needs to come out so you get access to the convertible module which is down in here is this just pulls off as a couple of clips and then once they clip that can just slide around. So there's just a clip there and a clip there that just pop off. And once you're here there's the convertible module here and that's the airbag. I think I put on a line that you actually need to remove that. That's uh, incorrect. Uh, the line that has the wires that normally break and the, the harness that actually goes to the front of the car to the where it latches to the windscreen comes through this line here. So to test the continuity you would actually just disconnect that plug there okay, and then you can check that with continuity, continuity with the, the wires at the front. I right, put all these pieces back in. That bottom one there are those two clips that need to go in, so I'm going to slide that forward section in first. I'm going to have that seal clear. I'm going to push this down there. There's a couple of things that just need to be pushed or you know, put in the correct place. Uh, and then I'm just going to look for that clip just there, push that in gently. And the same with the one at the front. The next one is this piece here. This can sometimes be a little bit of a pain. Make sure that that is clear, that front part of the seal. And what we're trying to do is connect these on these little knobs here but also this leading edge here needs to fit on the inside of this so what I'll do is I'll line them up at the front and then use a, a plastic tool to pry this away as I gently feed it down And once that's in place, this seal needs to be pulled up, slot that down in there, and everything is the right spot. That seal along that edge there is in nicely in place. And then once I've done that, I can put in those 7mm screws. Once I've got this on and those three screws in, I'm going to connect the slider. So I'm just going to feed the screw in there to look inside, get that hooked onto the correct spot. And once it's on, I'm just going to hook that onto the little the hole just there, and then I'm going to get the plastic piece and just feed that inside. The last piece is this panel. I'm just going to connect the speaker wire. These are a little bit different because it's an aftermarket speaker system. And then it's important that I get all these little tabs engaged correctly. It's easy to not do it. The best way I've found to do it is to put it on like that and then to slide it rearwards because then it's going to connect all here as well as all the top ones. And then there's that single clip. I'll pull it out to show you again. There's that clip there that's going to go into that hole there. So put it under there, put it in, slide it rearward, okay, and then gently press that in and once you've done that you can put that rubber over that little knob there we can get that seal and just gently slide it underneath there just probably a little bit easier to do that first and then you can put that down and put that over the top and the last thing you need to do is put in these 8mm screws I found these are a bit of a pain I just use a magnetic tool which holds onto the screw to get it going getting it going, going seems to be the hardest bit and then once you've got that going you can just tighten those up. Put the rear seat back in, have the, the seat belts around it like this just to keep them out of the way otherwise it's a real pain and then what we're going to do 
is the hooks on the back of the seat are going to go on here as well at the same time the these at the bottom need to go over those screws that come out of the, the car floor. So we're just going to lift it up underneath and so push it real whilst we're doing that and at the same time just look where they get threaded so they go down on the hole and the same on both sides then you can push that underneath there. Then all you need to do is those 10mm nuts go on there, just screw those down gently. The rear seat in. Pretty simple. When you're just pushing it back, you just need to thread in the seat belts into the correct spots. Push it rearward, and once it's in there, you push it straight down to clips in your business. And then we're just going to get that leather piece, which is the one that would expose the, the release and the Allen key for the, the convertible lock. Clip that down, and then all you need to do is put the seat back in place.